Welcome to this session on how to connect a relational database management system to a data lake or to anywhere you want to have the data using Apache NiFi. Apache NiFi can connect to any kind of data source and can put data to any kind of data sync and today we specifically look at how to do that with a relational database management system as a data source and put the data into, in this case, a simple file. So I've already set up um, and running a MySQL database as uh, my relational database management system. And as you can see, I've created a very simple table in a company database. The table is called people, uh, has two fields, the ID and the name, an integer and a character field and I've already inserted one value uh, with the ID one and the name Stefan. And that's, that is the database and the table that I'm going to connect to and try to replicate into a file that runs locally. This MySQL database runs on a node on the host C228 minus node 3 and my NIFA instance that you can see here runs locally. So the first thing that I need whenever I connect to a database is of course a database connection. So I'm using the query uh, database table record processor here uh, to do exactly <laughs> what it says, query a database table. And there's two options, the uh, table and the table record processor. And there's always the difference between a normal and the record processes. Whenever you have the possibility to use the record processes, use them because they have more performance. They allow you to define schemas, um, use the schema registry, and they also basically help you easily convert from one file format to another. So whenever possible, use record processes. And that's what I'm going to do now. You see this, this is the processor on the NIFI canvas. Um, and also let's put this processor in a process group. I'll call it uh, database connection demo. Now, process group basically confines a set of flows, a set of processors in NIFI. Um, drag and drop it here, double click and as you can see on the bottom line here, I'm now in a database connection demo um, and I can now build my data flow here. The first step, I configure the database connection. And as with every, every database connection, I first need to define the pooling service. Um, I'm, I already have prepared a MySQL connection pool. That I'm, I'm going to be using here and this one is not configured as you can see there's a lot of warnings um, a lot of missing information and that's why I'm going to configure it here uh, I need the database connection URL in my case the database connection URL is a JDBC connection string to uh, my SQL database so this is going to be the host name that MySQL server runs on the standard port. Um, I want to connect to the company database. And that's it. The database driver that I've already installed in my system is the uh, normal MySQL driver, JDBC driver that you can download from the MySQL database website. Um, uh, also, this is where I downloaded the driver jar to. This will be different for uh, every installation, especially if you use different systems. And I'm using version Java 8.0.18.jar. So that's it. Um, I just need to configure the database user. I'm going to use uh, Stefan. I didn't 
set a password so um, it's only secured by the network access and I'm the only one to have network access to this database. Apply. There's no more warnings so we've configured everything we theoretically need, hopefully correct, and I'm starting the pooling service. We don't see any issues here right now because we also don't fire a query. Um, the issues will be apparent once we start a query. And now with the query database table record processor that we now configured with the working and running MySQL connection pool, uh, we can go ahead and basically connect uh, to, to that connection pool and define the query that we want to fire. Um, using MySQL here, I want to connect to the table that is called people that I created in advance. I want to return all columns, so I leave that field empty. I, if I only wanted to return the ID, as you remember, we have ID and name. Um, or if I only wanted to return name, I could put this here. This is basically the select statement or the, the terms after the select statement. We can use a filter, a where clause here, uh, some, some uh, Maybe I just want to have special names um, and I could enter this, this here. I could also enter a custom query that will override all the other decisions before I won't do such a thing right now. Uh, what we need to define is because it's a record processor, record writer, basically to define the file format that we want to have this in. And I'm going to use uh, create a new record writer service and Avro record set writer. So I will create it. It's now there and I need to configure it here and start it. Basically the defaults are fine. What you could do is to define a schema, a certain schema, a certain schema registry and a schema name. But we won't do that. We will embed and inherit the schema, so uh, we won't use external services for the sake of this demo now. And we enable the record set writer. Go back to the processor. And basically that's it. That's it. So there's nothing more we need to do to connect to the database. And um, being able to query records and that's what we're going to do. Now there's still uh, a warning so if you've never used NIFA before it warns you that relationship success is invalid because success is not connected to any component it is not auto terminated. So what we are going to do here is or what we always have to do in NIFA since it's a flow based we all we need to connect this to another processor that also has warnings now for similar reasons because we didn't configure it and connect whatever we query to the other processor and define the relationship that we want to connect. For the query database table record processor we only have the success relationship. So that's the one that I'm using and you see the warning turns into a stop symbol it means the Process is currently stopped and when we um, press the play button here or right click on it and start it will here indicate it's uh, performing something, a query and we need to click the refresh button and we see basically that we uh, perform the query and we're still performing the query and we still and we are receiving flow files, which is great. So I'm stopping this processor for a second, refreshing because I'm impatient. We have 39 files here. Let's have a look what we have. With list queue, I can inspect the flow files and the files that we have queried so far. We, we see that all of those files have the same file size. So they are probably the same and I can look into it and as you see it's an Avro file 
but we can now format it, and make it beautiful and readable. And you see each of those files contains ID one name Stefan. Basically, in Abro format, what we have in our current database. Now, <laughs> that's not what we usually want to query the database. Um, every time we finish a query and always do a full table scan and always um, migrating the full table table. So we need to tell NiFi, I mean, we can have a look at number 17, you formatted. Yeah, it's the same entry. So we need to be able to tell NiFi either no, don't query the table like all of the time, or we need to tell NiFi only query certain parts of the table. Uh, basically, don't query or don't replicate from the table what you've already queried before. Um, let's have a look at option one. I'm going to empty the queue here, so delete all the files from the flow so that we can start from the beginning. So what we could do is we could enable scheduling, timer-driven, run schedule, and we could here use cron to uh, trigger the event or the, the query in our case uh, on a certain schedule. Um, timer-driven will uh, allow us to define a run schedule here. And I want the query in this case to be performed every 60 seconds. So what happens now is, if I restart this, refresh, we'll have one flow file, no query, and 60 seconds later, I'm not going to wait now, we will have the same query again and another flow file. So if you need to keep a very small table up to date in a sync, I don't know, maybe a lookup system, Redis, um, then this is a good way. But what if it's a large table and you really only need new entries? Then there's a, there's a uh, second way to do this, or another way to do this. Um, emptying the queue to start from the beginning. I still want to perform the run schedule every time a query finished. I want to be notified immediately when something changes. And I'm using the maximum value columns property. So I'll enter here ID, which is the column that uh, is going to be increased and that I want to filter on, basically. So what happens now is when we start, the processor, we get this one entry that we already have. And basically, that's it. It will perform the query, that the, the query database table record will be performed, but we, we won't add new files here since nothing changes on the source system. So let's enter a new row in the source system, id2, value of the name should be uh, Alex, inserted, uh, refreshing the UI, and then we see we have two flow files here, I'm listing the queue, the second flow file came just in a few seconds ago, I'm inspecting it, and yes, it, it's the flow file with this certain ID. Now, if I stop that processor and restart it, it performs the same query again, but it, it won't create duplicates here. So what if I wanted to query the full table I'm deleting those files, emptying the queue. What if I want to query the full table again? I need to clear the state. So I'm viewing the state. I, you see the key here is people ID. It's currently at the value um, 
two of the ID. I'm clearing the state. I'm starting the query. We have one flow file in here. Which flow file is it? The one that contains both entries of the current database. So since this was uh, one query performed, it contains all the records that are currently in the database. And whenever I add a new one, ID3, Leo, there is also, refresh UI, a new flow file, list queue, 12 seconds ago, a new flow file containing only the new entry. And then not as important, but um, basically what we want to do now is we don't want to keep this, uh, these events forever in the queue. We want to store them somewhere. And um, here I can configure just a local file file system to put the file into a file with, uh, with a, in a certain directory. I can name the directory. I can name the directory people updates and uh, configure it with a certain fail uh, conflict resolution strategy, uh, create missing directories if they don't exist, uh, set the owner, the group, permissions, and so on. Um, and I also, of course, have to set uh, success and failure relationships to route the flow file that is incoming. In both my cases, I don't want anything to happen further than just putting the file so I'm terminating the flow, um, the success and the failure uh, relationships, and I'm good to go here now. So instead of um, writing this to a file, I could put this anywhere. I could put this um, to a message queue, HDFS, Kafka, to an event hub, S3, Azure Data Lake, Elasticsearch, Solar, FTP server. I could even send an email with the, with the flow file contents. I could put this to Hive, InfluxDB, and so on. As you can see, there's like uh, 284 processors officially supported, but there's many, many more uh, in the community, and you can also write your own processors, but uh, that shouldn't be necessary as of now. That basically was uh, the, the basic introduction of what you can do um, with um, databases or how to connect relational databases. Thanks for watching.